Hey, Assalamu Alaikum. Peace be upon you and welcome back to my channel. Last month, Baratza sent me a unit of their new grinder, the Encore ESP. Think of it as a revamped version of their OG original Encore grinder, which couldn't effectively grind for espresso. The biggest feature of the new Encore ESP is its ability to grind for both espresso and coarser grinds for like pour overs and French press without any modifications to the machine. To be able to do that on the built-in Breville grinders, you have to remove the outer burr and adjust the ring to a coarser or finer setting depending on how you're brewing. It's a bit invasive and some people aren't comfortable doing that. So the fact that you can grind for both espresso and filter coffee on the Encore ESP by simply changing the grind size and do it well is uncommon. At the price point of $199, it's rare. So as far as my understanding goes, the new burr mechanism Baratza put in this machine has two like pitches or ranges. There's the macro larger adjustments on the right side range, which is effective for drip, pour overs, and French press. And then there's an espresso range on the left, which covers a finer range of sizes. Smaller micro adjustments between grind sizes can be necessary for fine tuning and dialing in espresso shots. So let's see if the Encore ESP's espresso range grind sizes correlate with finer changes from point to point. To get an idea of just how micro these espresso adjustments are, I did a simple test of grinding the same dose at three consecutive grind sizes and compared the output yielded. I used the same bag of beans for all my testing and I kept the pre-infusion at seven seconds and the total brew time at 30 seconds. Here's what happened. And then I did the same experiment with the Breville built-in grinder. Same beans, same dose, same time factors. Three different outer grind sizes. To be honest, I was a bit surprised to see the numbers. I expected the variance between grind size points to be smaller or finer on the Encore ESP, than the Breville built-in grinder, or at least like around the same. I do wonder if this variance will change at all over time. But anyways, what this experiment tells me is that since the output differences were relatively large from one grind size to the next, I can't really use the grind size as my changing variable when dialing in. It seems like I'll always have to adjust the dose and or brew time. Let's talk about retention. Right out of the box, the Encore ESP retained a couple grams of coffee. That means not all 18 grams of coffee that I put in came out. I'm not exactly sure why grinders retain more when they're brand new. Maybe burrs need to be seasoned, kind of like how cast iron pans need to be seasoned in order to become nonstick. After grinding just two or three doses, I did notice a significant shift in retention. The first time using the grinder, it probably retained around three grams, but by the third time using it, it was retaining about two to three tenths of a gram. Like every couple doses, the grinder does spit out the retained grams. So maybe my hopper drum beat isn't going anywhere. By the way, I did not use the Ross droplet technique where you spray the beans prior to grinding because I never did that with a Breville grinder and I wanted to compare apples to apples. So overall, I'm content with the amount of retention on the Encore ESP, but I'm not amazed. Aww. On the other hand, after about two years of using the Breville built-in grinder as my daily driver for espresso, mine is retaining between one to two grams without hitting the hopper, but it can retain as little as one tenth of a gram with a little smackdown. The dosing cup. The Encore ESP comes with a dosing cup, which I think is awesome. By default, it fits a 54 millimeter portafilter and comes with an adapter ring that fits 58 millimeter portafilters. To be fair, with pretty much any dosing cup, you'll need to do WDT. But the dosing cup does leave quite a noticeable dip or lip inside the portafilter when you transfer the grounds. 
So far, coffee grounds don't stick to the Baratza dosing cup, so no static yet. But my favorite feature of this dosing cup is that it's transparent. I can see the grounds inside, which helps me level out the grounds in just the transfer alone. Is it easy to clean? The Encore ESP's burrs can be removed without any tools. So yeah, it's pretty easy to clean. They do include a bottle brush thing so you can get up in there and loosen up any coffee grounds that are stuck. The built-in Breville grinder isn't as easy to clean though because it's kind of hard to remove the outer burr once you have beans stuck in there from retention, which is inevitable. So I do really appreciate how easy it is to remove the Encore ESP's burrs with a simple lift and thumb screw. Experience and smaller points. When comparing the Baratza Encore ESP to the Breville built-in grinder, the grind times are similar. If you factor in the extra banging and purging to get all the grounds out, then maybe the Baratza grinder is like two to three seconds faster when grinding 18 grams of espresso. Right off the bat, I did notice how loud the Encore ESP is compared to the built-in grinder. I'll let you listen for a moment. As far as experience goes, using the Baratza Encore ESP is not difficult. The Breville built-in grinder is designed to grind directly into your portafilter hands-free. But for the Encore ESP, you'd have to purchase an accessory to be able to do that. Both grinders output is pretty clumpy and requires WDT, so it's nice and convenient that Baratza included a dosing cup. I do really enjoy the new Encore ESP's pulse button for purging out any retained grounds. There isn't a timed function or setting though, so if you're not single dosing, it might be difficult to gauge when to stop. One last thing to note is the hopper lid doesn't sit snug while you're actually grinding. Mine almost always starts to lift up and out of the hopper. Maybe the single dose hopper available for purchase would be better, but I feel like this is a simple fix on Barossa's part. The dosing cup also likes to dance and twirl around when the grinder's on. Conclusion If you'll remember, in my initial reaction video, I was quite impressed with the quality of espresso that the Barazza Encore ESP was grinding. The taste difference is what really caught my attention. But I have to be honest, I was a little disappointed when I discovered that the variability in size from point to point on the scale wasn't as fine as I'd hoped. But let's look at the actual claims from Baratza. The Encore ESP minimizes the ground coffee left in the grinder. They claim that grind sizes 1 through 20 are optimized for espresso and produce consistent and precise grinds required for espresso, and that it produces excellent filter grinds from sizes 21 to 40. Since my focus has been on espresso, that's what I tested almost exclusively with this grinder. So all in all, I do think the Baratza Encore ESP lives up to its claims and hype. The coffee community might be tempted to compare it to all standalone espresso grinders, but the Encore ESP doesn't claim to be a zero retention grinder or an end game espresso grinder. They've got other grinders for that. The Encore ESP is an entry level grinder, probably on the level of the Breville Smart Grinder Pro and built-in grinders. The 54mm dosing cup is a giveaway for that. And I think the Baratza Encore ESP is just a step up from the built-in. Does it make sense for a person with a Barista Express or Barista Pro to get the Encore ESP? Uh. Maybe not, unless they really enjoy other brewing methods like pour over or French press. But if you've got like a Breville Bambino Plus or Infuser, the Encore ESP is a really great standalone grinder to start with. You might never even feel the need to upgrade from it. And Baratza is so good at encouraging consumers to repair and recycle its products by selling pretty much any part you can think of for their products. If you've got any questions about the Encore ESP or my comparisons, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. I do have a Patreon as well where you can get one-on-one -on -one help from me with your espresso journey. A big thank you to Baratza for sending me this grinder. And as always, thank you so much for your support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you in the next one.